There's been so much conversation around the GameStop situation over the past few weeks. I mean, even in Romania where I live, media publications have covered what happened with this insane battle between Reddit users and giant Wall Street hedge funds. If you go on a bus, it's very likely you'll overhear people talking about it. And it's something you've never seen before. Up to just a few weeks ago, you could never even possibly fathom a bunch of regular guys in their underwear banding together and sticking it to the man at such a level. It was so insane and so oddly satisfying. Now, over the course of this video, as we touch on financial terms and talk about the stock market, I have to make it very clear that I'm not a financial advisor and I'm by no means an expert in the matter. I'm simply voicing my opinions on a topic that I find really fascinating. Now, if I were to put everything that happened into a single sentence, it would be that institutions that have historically manipulated the stock market for hundreds of years got a little too greedy and when Reddit users saw a chink in their armor, they put their collective weight to work in a way that literally squeezed the hedge funds against the wall and made them lose billions of dollars in the process. Here's why and how all of this happened. To some extent, everybody knows what the stock market is. It's not really rocket science. It's where public companies share a part of their valuation, which investors can buy and sell small pieces of. And based on the supply and demand, the price of one share goes up and down in value. The idea is for people to support companies they believe in and give them money so they can grow their operations while making a profit themselves along the way. The stock market should, at least in theory, represent the epitome of meritocracy. Because if a company does well, its market cap grows. If it shows a lack of vision or failure, fails to bring in good results, it then tanks. But by this point, I don't think anyone truly believes it's meritocracy that drives the stock market when you have billionaires and hedge funds out there manipulating the market with huge capital. I mean, if you just Google top 10 hedge funds, it's right there in plain sight. Davidson Kempner Capital Management, $33 billion in assets under management. Citadel Advisors, $29 billion. Elliott Management, $73 billion. Man Group. I mean, talk about a little creativity here. <laughs> These guys literally call themselves the man group. They've been on the market since 1784 and they have over 117 billion dollars in assets under management. So when you see these mammoths dominating the market for literally hundreds of years, it should at the very least put a question mark in your mind as to whether you're really on the same boat as them in terms of influencing the market. Historically speaking, if these guys have not approved of a particular company, they've had the leverage to sink its valuation all the way down to the bottom of the ocean. The way they do that is by short selling a stock. For example, example, Tesla is a classic example of this. In a world of internal combustion engines, where a few select companies have been running the industry for over a century, when Elon Musk sprang on the scene with his electric car, it completely turned the automobile market on its head. So what did the hedge funds do? They weren't just gonna accept some new kid on the block putting a halt to their arrangements. They started short selling Tesla stock. In other words, they bet against Tesla. Contrary to buying shares in a company, thus driving its price up, short selling is like putting a stack of bricks on the price keeping it low, and the lower it goes, you earn more money as the company values less. The only reason it didn't work with Tesla is because no matter what you do to postpone it, you can't stop innovation. But for many other companies, short sellers often have the power to keep the stock price exactly where they want it. Now, does that sound fair to you? Because that doesn't resemble meritocracy to me. It just sounds like a bunch of billionaires sitting around with cigars in their mouths, deciding who to let in and who to keep out of their fancy exclusive club. Historically, there hasn't been much that you could do about about it though, until the internet started to get a little wiser. In 2013, this guy right here, Vlad Tenev, founded a company called Robinhood. The mission of the app, much like its name indicates, was to break barriers and allow the little guy to trade, even if all they had was $20. The slogan of Robinhood was literally, let the people trade. Much like the character of Robinhood, you know, steal from the rich, give to the poor, this new platform revolutionized investing by allowing commission-free stock trading, thus bringing in a huge wave of inexperienced but eager young investors to which the stock market had been inexpensive accessible before. And probably one of the most fascinating places on the internet to sprout as a direct result of this was the subreddit r slash Wall Street Bets. Stepping into that world will plunge you into a real life version of the Wolf of Wall Street except a thousand times crazier. If the regular stock market trader takes time to analyze the market, researches stocks and invests steadily across decades of their life, responsibly planning for their retirement, the average Wall Street Bets investor has $100 and wants to turn it into a million. 
fast. These guys have nothing to lose. They call themselves degenerates and their catchphrase is YOLO. They don't buy stocks but instead use high leverage tactics in hope of seeing big juicy gains overnight, which have a tendency to not pan out. Granted, there's a few success stories on the subreddit, such as user snakeperson123 putting in $800 and making $115,000, but then there's also users like 22 yards who is down $33,000 after betting in the wrong direction. He goes, uh, how do I fix this? <laughs> and this other guy responds with, take a green sharpie and draw a jagged line towards the upper right hand corner of the screen. <laughs> Wall Street Bets has already had a history of controversial episodes and have often been cited on news stations as irresponsible trolls with no respect for the stock market. But what happened in January took their profile to a completely new level. So we've talked about the hedge funds, about Robinhood and the rise of Wall Street bets, but the way they all come together is through GameStop. I know a lot of viewers on this channel don't live in the United States, so there's a big chance you're not familiar with GameStop. But in America, for every kid born in the late 80s, early 90s, GameStop was a big part of their childhood. It was the biggest brick and mortar video game retailer, eventually spreading even across Canada, Australia and Europe. But just like Netflix killed Blockbuster, online video game purchases made GameStop pretty irrelevant. And seeing how the GameStop business model was losing popularity, the Wall Street hedge funds, like the vultures that they are, started heavily short selling GameStop on the stock market. So one day, a Reddit user on Wall Street Bets by the name of Senior Hedgehog pointed out how 84% of shares were short, meaning there was 5 times more power driving the stock down than there were people organically supporting the company. And mind you, this was posted in April of 2020. By January of 2021, the short interest percentage was over 140%, which means more shares were being shorted than there were actual shares in circulation. This was a paradox that showed how greedy the hedge funds had become. And by being greedy, they had become vulnerable. And this time, Reddit was ready to teach them a lesson. When you short a stock, what that means essentially is that you lend someone else one share at the current price, let's say $10, and when the price goes down, let's say to $7, you buy it right back, keeping the $3 difference as profit. But the risk here is that once you've lent out the share, if the stock goes up to say $15, not only do you not make any profit, but you now have to pay the $5 difference. And again, 140% of GameStop shares were being lent out, which is about 90 million shares. So Reddit users coordinate to go on the Robinhood app and collectively bought GameStop stock at insane volumes, driving the price from around $19 at the start of January to a whopping $480 at the highest peak. This is called a short squeeze, and it's not an uncommon tactic on Wall Street, but never before has it been put into practice by regular people coming together on the internet. The hedge funds got a mouthful of their own medicine, and it was bitter. The 90 million shares they had lent out at $5 to $10 now had to be bought back at $50 to $100 hundred times the original price. According to Fortune.com, by January the 29th, the losses had risen to $19.75 billion. Hedge funds had to be bailed out so as to not go bankrupt. Investment bank Goldman Sachs warned that the entire stock market could crash if Reddit users didn't sell their shares in order to drive the stock price back to its original spot. And as all of this madness was unfolding, the biggest promoter of giving power to the people, Robinhood, decided to restrict users from buying more GameStop stock while still allowing allowing them to sell their current shares, thus showing a clear bias in favor of the big institutions. Now, of course, liquidity played a big role in this decision, Robinhood themselves requiring a cash injection of $2.4 billion to stay in business, but to Reddit, this gesture was seen as the ultimate betrayal. The brand of Robinhood was expected to stand exactly for what Wall Street bets had managed to accomplish, stealing from the rich and empowering the little guy. Instead, the app was seemingly siding with the hedge funds, and so Vlad Tenev, in instantly became a villain in the eyes of the people. A lot of people even started wondering if Robinhood didn't shut down trading at the behest of the Wall Street big suits. There's currently lawsuits being thrown about, in my opinion, with high chances of doing serious damage to Robinhood, and Vlad Tenev himself is set to testify before a US House committee on the 18th of February. In fact, by the time you're watching this, that may have already happened. As of me working on this video, there's more confusion than we have any clear answers. One thing we know is that GameStop stock seems to have returned back down close to its original price, but what happened here is certainly set to change the course of the global financial world. Once regular people realized that together they wield a considerable amount of power against these billion dollar institutions, that's a genie that you can never shove back in the bottle. It's a fascinating story that I'm sure people will revisit for years to come, and it's very likely that things will never be the same after this. In what way exactly? 
I guess we'll have to wait and see. But let me know in the comments what your thoughts are on this entire debacle. Did you take part in the GameStop short squeeze? And how do you see everything moving forward from here? I'm very curious to read your guys' thoughts down below. As always, thank you for watching. We'll see you again very soon.